Club Wilson Show. With Clip's guest, George Carlin, Miss Black America, Joyce Warner, and her royal court. And with special guest, Joe Namath. And now, here's Flip. Turn. I was worried about the turn. I went off twice during rehearsal. Oh, couldn't wait to get out of here. Let me tell you, got a good show tonight. My guests this evening are a person, first, a personal friend of Geraldine's, Joe Namath. Yeah. I, I would take the time to say more about Joe, but Joe speaks for himself very well, too. We also have Back by popular demand, George, I got a very funny new album out, Carlin. Too much! George Carlin! And in addition to all of that, we have the winner and the three runners up of the recent Miss Black America Beauty Contest. Can I hear it one time for Miss Black America? Now, I had heard that these young ladies liked ice cream. So I uh, said, well, maybe I can arrange for you to meet Herbie, the good time ice cream man. So we shall see what we shall see. Herbie's back. Maybe it's the good time man. <laughs> I know you. You're, uh, uh, oh, wait a minute. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Wait a minute. Uh, you're, uh, uh, you're a big time football player, right? Yeah, it's a big time. Uh, you're a quarterback, right? You're, uh, Johnny and Niners. <laughs> Bus stars? Roger Staubach. I'm Joe Namath. Oh, how you doing, Joe? Uh, uh, Joe name. I didn't recognize you without the bandages. <laughs> well, what, what can I do for you, Joe? Well, I'd like to get some ice cream. What flavors do you have? Ice cream? You eat ice cream? Joe Namath eats ice cream. <laughs> well, Joe, we have all of the exotic flavors the Good Time Company is famous for. However, Joe, since we're very pressed for time, I must say that I will only repeat the flavors one time. You know, I said it earlier. Twice a day is how many times I say the flavors. So once I've said them, I will not say them again, Joe. Okay? So please, do not ask. Are you ready? I'm ready. Yeah, I bet you are. Hmm. <laughs> You stay ready. <laughs> well, uh, today, Joe, we have chocolate and vanilla. Go on. <laughs> Go on. That's it. Well, what's so exotic about that? Use your imagination, Joe. <laughs> Joe, imagine. You're on a moonlit South Sea island. <laughs> Get a drum, Joe. That's my cousin. <laughs> you're on the moonlit island, and you're with a fine-looking chick. Fine-looking chick. She's in a bikini, Joe. <laughs> you're with her. <laughs> She's stroking your hair. <laughs> you? Yeah, we can't see your hands. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gazing into her eyes. And her skin is the deep, rich color of exotic chocolate. Oh, that is exotic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here comes the husband. I'll take vanilla. <laughs> Good thing. Joe. <laughs> Joe wants a vanilla. You have French vanilla. <laughs> Joe, the Good Time Company, a Delaware corporation, <laughs> produces only American ice cream, Joe. Now, would you like to have an American good time? 
Well, the French have good times, too. Uh, Joe, we're talking about ice cream. <laughs> look, look, Joe, uh, ho, oh, I see some, uh, prospective customers coming. I'm gonna have to ask you to stop loitering around my operation here. Hey, hey that looks like the beauty queens. Hey, Joe, man! Queen, Joe. <clears throat> uh, Joe, why don't you offer the ladies some ice cream? May I offer you ladies some ice cream? Watch out, y'all. You know how sneaky them quarterbacks are. <laughs> well, where are you ladies from? We're from all over. Yeah. <laughs> We're from all over. Let's hear it one time for the all over. <laughs> Black America, my name is Joyce Warren, and I'm from Florida. Mm -hmm. I'm Cheryl Bird, I'm Miss New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And I'm Sarah Neely, Miss Missouri. Yeah! Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Missouri is the uh, show me state. Well, you can show me anytime. <laughs> Why don't we go out and check the town? Well, we're waiting for Miss Minnesota. Could you teach us about football? <coughs> girl, girl, it's obvious y'all don't know about Joe. <laughs> teach us about football. <laughs> Tell Rochelle we'll meet at the hotel. I sure will. Well, good evening, Hastori. Knock it off! Well, good evening, Hostility fans. Time once again for the news. Walter Wolf here. Jerry Mann here. Bringing you... The Wolf Man News. <laughs> Tonight, our sponsor is Tingle After Shave Lotion. After every shave, use Tingle. Drink it straight or on the rocks. It's terrific. Sometimes I shave 15 or 20 times a day. Back to you, Walter. Well, thanks, Jerry. The next labor trouble to hit the nation will be the animal strike. That's right, the IBABC, the International Brotherhood of Animals, Beasts, and Critters, <laughs> announced today that unless their demands are met, they will run, fly, swim, trot, canter, and gallop off the job at midnight tonight. They're asking for more food and not to be killed all the time. Here's more news, just no stopping. Another tuna boat was captured by Ecuador outside of the 200-mile limit. The president stated that this is getting out of hand. This boat was still in San Diego. <laughs> Back to you, Walla. That's mighty wide of you, Jerry. Scientists... <laughs> scientists think they have solved the world's food problems. They've invented a process whereby compressed garbage can be turned into little statues of Donald Duck. <laughs> These statues can then be traded to people for food. <laughs> Several more names were added to the growing list of Democratic presidential candidates today as Harold Stassen, Don Ho, Dave Brubeck, Jack Frost, Father Time, Arlene Francis, and the entire cast of Bridge on the River Kwai tossed their hats into the ring. <laughs> now for some news from across the tracks, here is Stafford Cripps. Stafford Cripps here, where it's happening. Mom's Barbecue Palace was held up again for the fifth time. However, this was the first time the hold-up man got any money. <laughs> On the brighter side, here's a story with a happy ending. Martha Morse and Harold Perkins, childhood sweethearts since 1890, yesterday were married at the age of 93. A case of better late and never. <laughs> a used late model economy car was reported stolen from Honest Marvin's used car lot. Police overtook the stolen car after a chase of 400 feet. It's all yours, Waller. Thank you, Jerry. Medical researchers have discovered a new disease which has no symptoms. It's impossible to detect and there's no known cure for it. Fortunately, it's confined to New Jersey. South Vietnamese President Thieu has announced he will enter the Wisconsin primary as a Republican. Feels that Vietnam should not be an issue. 
Says he inherited it from President Johnson. Interstate Highway 95 was the scene of a freak accident today as three freaks in a camper crashed into six freaks in a van. Glendale. According to the latest statistics, the new street lights in Glendale have reduced crime by 50%. It would have been 100%, but half of the lights were stolen. <laughs> San Diego. A gorilla escaped from the San Diego Zoo today. He is to be considered dangerous. He's carrying a knife. Do not approach without a banana. Back to you, Walter. The Food and Drug Administration has issued a warning today that chewing the fingernails causes tooth decay in short people. <laughs> Thousands of senior citizens will converge on Washington next week in the first major demonstration by Elderly Lib. They plan a series of nonviolent marches in naps. <laughs> and now, here with all the sports, is Charlie Horse. Charlie Horse here. We tell them as we see them. If we don't, we use old scores. In racing at Santa Anita today, the winner of the third race was Flying Tiger, who finished last in the second race. <laughs> In basketball today, the Athletic Humanitarian Award went to Wilt Chamberlain for his generous award of $100,000 to the State Home for the Tall. <laughs> A new world record was set in the mile run today by an unknown who ran the distance in 350 flat. A policeman came in second, a bullet came in third. <laughs> Here's Al Sleet, your hippy dippy weatherman. Hey, what's happening? Hey, Pasa. Hey, what you call your Pasa? Al Sleet here, your hippy dippy weatherman. If you'll take a look at our national weather map, you'll see that we don't have one. So try to picture last night's map up in your mind. Remember all them lines and numbers. Weather was dominated by a whole lot of little low pressure centers. A whole lot of lows. What this country needs is a good high. <laughs> high pressure should pass through St. Louis. Joplin, Missouri, Oklahoma City is mighty pretty. You see, <laughs> Well, everybody's got their own little trips, you know. So on, man. Thank you, Al Sleep, from your piano bar in the sky. Before we say goodnight, we want to leave you with a thought. There's an old saying, they never come back. But it's not true. In 1954, Frank Sinatra came back. In 1970, Richard Nixon came back. And tomorrow night, we'll be back. <laughs> And now it's my pleasure to present the lovely young beauty queen from Missouri, Miss Sarah Neely. How you doing, Mama? Oh, I'm doing fine, Daddy. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, I just finished reading your vital statistics, Sarah, and I understand that you're still going to school. Yes, the School of the Ozarks at Point Lookout. Yeah, look out. <laughs> I'm going to be a scientist. Mm -hmm. I can see it now, love in the lab. <laughs> right? Sarah, uh, tell you what, why don't I sit here while uh, you take a moment over there to sing the song that carried you into the finals? Whatever you say. In a minute, huh? <laughs> Set's ready, you're ready, and Sarah knows I've been ready. <laughs> Very hard 
chair Even when there's no one sitting there Ladies and gentlemen, these two turkeys have invited me to play a game of cards. Watch this, I'm gonna kill them. You can play cards, can't you? Can I play? Can I play? Tell him, George. He can play. I want to warn you, when I play, I play hard. Tell him, George. He plays hard. Ruthless. Ruthless. Yeah. Well, I was thinking of a friendly game. When I play, there's no such thing as a friendly game. If you want a friend, buy a dog. Okay, okay. <coughs> You're about to be two rich guys reduced to poverty. <laughs> Y'all gonna be so poor, you'll have to live in the back of the ghetto. <laughs> hey, gentlemen, put up your money. <laughs> yes, get out them cakes. Yes, you do. Oh, if you have any stocks, bonds, or mayhaps a deed to a plantation. <laughs> I'll take that also. Miss Clarabelle, bring a cup of julep for the visitors. <laughs> I have something that's worth more than all of that. What is that? My little black book. You're gonna risk your little black... He's willing to bet everything. <laughs> yeah, now you're talking. <laughs> okay, okay, what do you want to play? <laughs> Anything you want to play. Poker, blackjack, gin rummy, coon can, you name it, I play it. How about Carlotta? Carlotta's fine with me. Mm, then uh, Carlotta it is. <laughs> but first, first, there's a, a couple of things I want to make clear. No singing the blues after you lose. And uh, second is, how do you play Carlotta? <laughs> You play blackjack, you play poker and gin rummy, right? It's just a combination of all of them. Well, if you want to play something else, you know. I did not express the desire to play something else. Y'all going to play Carlotta? Then I shall play Carlotta. Just tell me how it goes. Well, it's real simple. It's uh, red on black, black on red, and a hot flush pizza bent straight every time. <laughs> with, uh, with fours as fives and a jumping queen. It's called a Carlotta Jumper. Uh, I guess I'll catch on sure. as we go along here. You'll pick it up. How do I know when I win? We'll let you know. <laughs> and it's your meld. My meld? I thought the meld went clockwise. We're playing counter Carlotta. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good card. Good yeah. opening card. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you're not playing with an amateur. No. I, I know see. what I'm doing. Put my money in here and don't know what I'm doing. Hmm. Get in there, Joe. Da -da 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 -da. Hmm. Rumble queen and a hopping heart. That's $150. 150. Hey, and that gives me a club crossover. One stack. Yeah. You get $150 and you get a stack? Yeah. What happened? Would y'all run that by me again, please? Sure. Hopping heart, $150. And I got a club crosser, one stack. This is a heck of a game, ain't it? You guys take gold teeth? It's your mail. You're all kind of anxious, ain't you? I better just let y'all wait a minute. Y'all very anxious to get to the cakes. Well, I got a 298 non straight. Yeah, the best I can do is a jack on the double seven, I think. Bet she's got the four. I've never seen a four after play like that. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Watch. Nobody's ever played a four? Not usually, yeah. Not after that. No? no? <laughs> never in the history of the game, man. Well, it just so happens that I have in my possession at this time a four. Oh. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, look at that. You see that? <laughs> you told us you didn't know how to play this game. Well, I have to confess, I lied. <laughs> well, let's see. For the double seven, I get uh, $275. <laughs> and uh, for the 298 non straight, I get. Uh... You have got another stack, haven't you? Yes, that's just right. Thank you. Yeah, and hey, <laughs> Flip, you got, uh, let's see, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85 cents for you, Flip. Yeah. <laughs> Good first game. What happened? Well, you shouldn't have laid that four. Nah, you blew it when you threw the four down, Flip. Okay, well, I'm going to start getting ruthless now. Uh -huh. I assume it's my mail. Mm -hmm. It cost me $5,000 to play first the last two times. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. open strong. Hey, a leaping spade. Keep going. Keep That's him coming. Right. Or jumping all over the place, spade. <laughs> black and black. Got the three. Eight two eight. He's gonna do it. Double nine. Heading for Carlotta. There's the king. Hey, if you got the jack of hearts, they can make it. I got it. Hey, Carlotta. Carlotta. Carlotta loses. Carlotta. Lose. Now, y'all play. The rules state that if the last player holds an inoculated ace, a divorce king and queen over a jack double seven on a Thursday, he wins. Where did you get all of that from? From the rules. The rules of Carlotta, there's no such game. Yeah, we just made this up. Well, I made up the rules. <laughs> I made up the rules. <laughs> I'm not gonna waste my time over there with those two losers when I got a date with a winner. <laughs> and now the aforementioned winner, Miss Cheryl Burt, first runner-up in the Miss Black America pageant. She's from Camden, New Jersey. How you doing, Mama? I'm a little nervous. Cheryl, <laughs> tell us a little about your background. Okay. I'm a sociology major at Douglas College, and this is my senior year. You know, sociology is all about making people get along better with each other. Mm -hmm. That's my primary interest, learning how to get along better with people. 
I think the best way I could get along with you would be to get out of here and let you do your thing. You got it, Mom. Thank you. Welcome to my job. <laughs> right, I'm working here tonight. This is my job, right? Most people don't have an audience for their job, but uh, I do. Always have to get used to that fact, you know. Gotta calm down a little. This job makes you a little bit nervous, you know? Gotta stand up in front of people. You've had to do that, yeah. Sometimes audiences have a little nervousness, I think. Kind of a, a show tension, you know? Because you wait for the time and the music and the lights and the announcement, and you're a little nervous because you know that you kind of represent your row, right? <laughs> you know, you want to make sure you're not sitting in a stupid position or something, you know? Yeah, this job's nice. Originally, this job was called Fool. <laughs> a few hundred years ago. What's your son do? Well, he's a fool. <laughs> America's fastest rising young fool. I have no way to uh, get this in, so I just kind of go to it. Uh, I was brought up in the East in a large city where uh, ethnic sounds are very uh, important and, and they're very distinct. You can tell the difference among groups. And although that's kind of a fading thing, those sounds stay with you. My own group, the Irish, our sound was this one. Pat O'Brien kept that going for us. Always went down, never went up, never went. And there was the Italian sound. Hey. Hey. And a Jewish sound. And a black sound. So here's a story without any words, just some sounds. Hey. 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 <laughs> Cop busts them all, right? <laughs> On the corner. I'm aware some stare at my hair. In fact, to be fair, some really despair of my hair. But I don't care, because they're not aware. Nor are they debonair. In fact, they're just square. 
They see hair down to there, say beware, and go off on a tear. I say, no fair. A head that's bare is really nowhere. So? Why not be like a bear? Be fair with your hair. Show it you care. Wear it to there. Or to there. Or to there if you dare. My wife bought some hair at a fair to use as a spare. <laughs> Did I care? Au contraire. Spare hair is fair. In fact, hair can be rare. Fred Astaire got no hair. <laughs> Nor does a chair nor a chocolate eclair. Where is a hair on a pear? Nowhere, mon frere. <laughs> now that I've shared this affair of the hair, I think I'll repair to my lair and use nair. Do you care? <laughs> Short sequel, here's my beard, ain't it weird? Don't be scared. It's just a beard. I found it one time that I had to say that. I felt I had to reassure people about the beard. Beard. It's got kind of a bad reputation. Beard. Turns people off. I think it's the word as well. Not just the beard, but that word. Beard. He's got a beard, Marge. <laughs> Sounds vaguely un-American, doesn't it? Castro has a beard. Rasputin had a beard. Gabby Hayes had whiskers. <laughs> Whiskers wouldn't hurt you. By the way, the country has come a long way on freaks and long hairs. I must congratulate the nation. Really, in the last two years, no longer when you go in a store do they go, ah! Ah! No. They don't do it anymore. I think it's because by now they know that they have two or three of these people in their family. <laughs> They say to themselves, maybe he's like Eddie. <laughs> and of course, he is Eddie. Time for my break. I'll share this with you. No one ever shares a swallow with you. <laughs> there are two parts to the swallow. Did you ever notice it? Parts one and two, of course. The first one, the first is kind of a bubbly sound. When you pour some water or anything in your mouth, your throat closes up. Cause your throat don't trust your mouth. <laughs> throat knows that your mouth is crazy. And so when you pour something in, your throat says, hold on, check that stuff out. And the brain goes, okay, it's okay, let it go. And that is the second half as the water rushes home. You, I would like to close with my tribute to industry. Oh, beautiful for smoggy skies, insecticided grain, for strip mined mountains, majesty above the asphalt plain. America, America, man sheds his waste on thee and hides the pines with billboard signs from sea to oily sea. <laughs> And now, Miss Black America, from the state of Florida, Miss Joyce Warner.
Can you hide it? Let's not be formal. You can call me Joyce. Oh, uh, what's happening, Joyce? That's a pleasure. I can call you Joyce, and you may call me Mr. Wilson. <laughs> Actually, Joyce comes from a very, very distinguished family. Uh, why not tell the audience a little about your background? Well, my grandfather was president of Florida a &M University where I go to school, and my father was a coach there. Well, well they sure coach you, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Miss Joyce Warner will now bring us an instant replay of those two magic moments in the competition that won her the title of Miss Black America. May Thank I help you. you with your coat here? And then you have it, love. All right. Thank you. Do it, do it. <laughs> A thousand years from now, if there is any trace of earth, history, culture, or man, it shall be well known that the black man gave much to the American dream. A rhythm echoed in the lashing of their backs. A song with melody entwined with suffering, and yet he had a meager soul of compassion. He often found himself denounced, denied, abused, confused, yet he kept his soul free. Yes, free, by being anchored firmly in the belief in God. In the Lord, in the Lord, my soul's been anchored in the Lord. Before I'll stay in hell one day, my soul's been anchored in the Lord. I'll sing and pray myself away. My soul's been anchored in the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord. My soul's been anchored in the Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Howard Nosell <laughs> at the famous Pasadena Clothes Bowl, where tonight we're judging the latest fashions from across the seas and above the knees. <laughs> now here to help me describe all the action is the Bo Brummel of the backfield, that dandy Don Juan with the golden arm, the man who knows his way around ladies' fashions because he's taken so many snaps from Santa. <laughs> Broadway Joe Namath. Thank you, Howard, but you did exaggerate a little. Why, Joe, everyone knows you're a ladies' man. Well, no, I meant about my golden arm. Nonsense, Joe. It's a known fact that your passes are impossible to defend against. You've been talking to the other teams, huh? No, the girl's backstage, Joe. <laughs> and now, if you'll pardon the pun, Joe, we'll kick off the ceremonies with Jersey's glamorous Miss Cheryl Burke, modeling the latest creation from Pierre of Paris. The understated elegance of this dramatic dinner ensemble simply shrieks for champagne and caviar. One can almost hear it whisper, Dine me, 
Wine me. Watch it, Joan. With this bold splash across tomorrow's fashion page, Pierre Paris makes the startling pronouncement, Georgette is back. Who's Georgette? Georgette is like chiffon, only Georgette is stiff. Maybe it's because she's always yelling, wine me. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Burke. Pas de quoi, baby. <laughs> And now, the lovely Miss Sarah Neely brings us the latest creation from Pietro of Rome. Mm -hmm. What could be modder than Scheherazade? No wonder you get injured a lot, Joe. Pietro de Roma says, go Arabian. Moshe Diane says, go Arabian. <laughs> and good news for all you Trevera lovers. From here to there, it's wash and wear. Come home, Don Meredith, all is forgiven. But <laughs> even dirty, Roman. My friends call me Sarah. Anything you say, love. <laughs> <laughs> And now our next entry. Unfortunately, it's crossed out on my card, Joe. I, uh... oh, mine too. What's going on? Precisely, who do you represent? My name is Geraldine Jones, and I'm the fashion expert representing the working girls of America. <laughs> Hello, working girls. For the first time in my career, words fail me. <laughs> what difference does it make? <laughs> uh, Miss Jones. Yes, I remember you from the uh, gymnasium. Remember you came in? Yes. <laughs> you may call me Geraldine. Well, I, I don't believe you've entered the fashion show. I am now. I didn't register, I just came on. I mean, give me a break. You let all those other chicks in. And they were wearing all those fancy dresses from Paris and Rome. Give the working girls a chance. <laughs> yes. You know, you know I made this outfit myself? Cost eight dollars and forty-three cents. That much. Yes, that much. Uh, well, thank you very much, Miss Jones. Mm -hmm. Look at it flow, Joe. I'm looking. Yes. <laughs> Joe, I knew you were gonna be here, so I gave it a football motif. As you can see, the skirt runs from the midfield to the end zone. <laughs> yes, Killer says that helps a lot when my back feels in motion. <laughs> well, uh, who's Killer? <coughs> Who is Killer? <laughs> the question is not who is Killer. The question is, where is Killer? <laughs> well, Killer is the guy who calls my signals. He faded back with the football of my heart and threw a bomb across the goalposts of my love. <laughs> Touchdown. <laughs> well, Killer, Killer certainly must have some arm. Yes, he has a great arm, and his legs are pretty strong, too. <laughs> well, let's quit jiving, honey, and get on with the announcer. Well, wh where do I start? Well, start at the beginning. Look, Joe, give me a chance to get back up. You hold that for me. Okay. Watch it for me, because these chicks will steal anything. <laughs> I can't get out. Wait a minute, Joe. <laughs>
said, do it yourself. What'd you say, Joe? Uh, Geraldine of New York says, do it yourself. Not everything, Joe. <laughs> this groovy little gown stays inside the budget. And it keeps them lined up outside the door, too. <laughs> For just under $10, the skirt lifts just over the knee. Watch your mouth, honey. Yes, folks, this poor little working girl brings back memories of the raccoon coat bathtub gin. Gin in a bathtub? That's right. Mm, I'm gonna have to try that. That may be a way of keeping killer at home. And the big messy gives, Geraldine brings back the flapper look. Yes, honey. Now you can be the girl with it. When you got it, flaunt it. Before I say goodnight, I'd like to thank my guests, Mr. George Carlin, Miss Black America, Joyce Warner, and her royal court, Cheryl Burt, Sarah Neely, Miss Rochelle Callender, and my special guest, Mr. Joe Naiman. Thank you, good night, we love you.